Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the unofficial Live2E uh, English tutorial. Now today I'm going to talk about the animator, uh, the basics of it. So I try to keep it short, but it's it's pretty, you know, tr pretty tr tricky to explain things in animator. Especially I'm not a an experienced animator, so uh, even the keywords I would have I will have trouble with. But anyhow, I'll try to keep it short. I'll bring uh, go through the basics so that you can start. Exper experimenting on your own until I release the next episode to talk about details. All right, so you're looking at Live 2D Animator, Cubison 2.1, a uh, 32-bit free version. Now I encourage you to use 32-bit because if you're using the 64 bits, you cannot do a scene with uh, uh, like a lip sync with a voice clip. All right, so the uh, the, the demo, the preview, the demo preview I, I uploaded a few days ago. Uh, you cannot do that if you're using a 64-bit because some reason, uh, or I, can, I know the specific reason, is because uh, you need to install the legacy Java into your uh, Live2D Live2D Cubism folder. However, the Java uh, only provides a 32-bit version and doesn't have a 64-bit. And that's why if you want to have your voice clip, you want to make a a whole scene of her talking and lip syncing and doing uh, animations, uh, you gotta use the 32 bit, so stick with it for now. And if you have trouble installing uh, the Java, which you will realize that you have trouble with it when you try to put in a voice clip. If you try to drag and drop a voice clip into the material session and for, for yourself to use it, uh, you will realize that it may tell you that it cannot find or cannot recognize the Java or you do not have Java and that's why it doesn't support it. Um, it's not that you don't have Java. You don't have the specific one that it needs and at the specific location that it looks into. All right. So if you got a major problem with Java, you cannot install it. Let me know uh, if there's you know enough people asking. Maybe I'll think. Maybe I'll uh, make a video about specifically about installing Java part because I had trouble with it. I need to go to the official website and ask te uh, the technicians uh, how to install Java specifically. All right. So anyhow, um, so basically, Animator has two major uh, things that you can export out. One is called expressions. The other is called motions. Now, expression is sort of like a, a one, one act or one facial expression. So if you look at this example, I made this uh, scene called worry. And if I play, if I play the, the clip, all you can see is that it's, it's although you see it playing and repeating itself, um, all it does is really just staring at you with a uh, disappoint, with, with a disappointing or, or a, a, a worry state uh, stare all right and that's because this is all i need if i export this expression into and put it into live 2 d viewer then when i click worry she will do she will hold this stare from from idle motion to and turn to this face and stare at you for about i say 1.25 seconds and then she will return to the normal idle state or a previous state that she she was at. So this is an expression that she holds down for as long as this green bar uh, lasts. And that's all it does. You can have a real time lip sync uh, talking. So any so she would have her mouth speaking as you speak into the mic as she holds this expression that's possible. Or uh, it could be used in unity where you can do some interactive stuff. When you click on her, she would do. She would give you this look. Or if you proceed certain uh, action in game, she would uh, respond this behavior. So these are the major uh, use of expression. Now motion is almost the same, except that motion basically are animated expressions. So this is also what I call I call the mad face, but. Uh, it, it, it is a, while it is an expression, it also is animated. So if I press the play button here, go to the start and press play button. Now you'll see her uh, changing her face, all right? So she got that uh, impact right there. She closed her eyes, she holds her lips tight, and then she's gaze at you. And then, you know, that bam, that, that sight that looks into your eye, your eye and showing that she has that mad 
uh, cross vein between her eyes popping out. So that this is the animated expression, and then uh, I think that's what the what Life Two D calls a motion. All right, uh, it could be short, it could be long. This one is considered short because it's only like one point uh, less than one point ten seconds, maybe. Uh, that's that's all she does. And if you do a longer one, would be almost like the. Uh, video I uploaded a week ago, the full scene where she acts out a whole dialogue. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna press play and show you. Ta-da! Sup, Shorty? I'm gonna be your trainer. Right now you like pow, but when I'm done, you're gonna be like pillar pow. Get your butt to the arena and let's do this shiz. Step one of my training regimen is food. You got to get those carbs, son. The back of the arena got tons of noms for the workers. Get some cookies so you can eat them and grow up big and strong and kick piston in the butt butt. Ta-da! All right, so it's repeating itself now. Um, so usually a project, Life Two D project for, uh, I don't know. Generally speaking, if you're using for maybe making a, a, a an animation in uh, Adobe After Effects, or you could be making a uh, model for some some materials for Unity, a, an indie game project to make, you would want to have a couple of basic expressions the the mad the sad the the happy uh the the worried the scared uh all those things you you usually have some basic expressions that um that sits there and and whenever it comes in handy you throw them in so the basic ones that are expressions all right and then you're going to make some motions that you certainly would want it to look lively and animated or if you have certain important dialogues, or maybe the whole game is about dialogues, then you would have you would do a lot of, a lot of these motions, and motions are a lot more time consuming than expressions. So today I'm gonna first talk about expressions, and basically motion are you know since it's like a extended version of an expression, so I'm gonna do those later. However, um, here's how we do how we start a new project uh, after you you've done your model. And all the parameters setting inside uh, Live 2D Modeler, and this is what you're gonna do. All right, so you can, um, as you open this animator, it will ask you to open a project. You cannot enter without opening a project. So you open a new one, and uh, you're gonna come over here and look at the Scene tab. Click New to create a new scene, and let's say call it a uh, blush. Blush one. 30 frame rate is okay for now. If you are getting serious into the project, you might consider 60 frame rate or 50 at least. And uh, don't worry about these for now. Uh, fade in, fade out is something to keep in mind. It's a concept that uh, the whole Live 3 animator and viewer uh, uh, come across a lot. And fade in and fade out basically, mostly, are explaining how smoothly it the expression changes. So fade in into this expression and fade out into other expressions or the idle movement um, or the idle states. Now you can you can be choosing those fade in fade out time frame here or specifically individually here perhaps for only a particular material or a particular perimeter or even when you export the whole motion out, uh, when you save the motion, you would also have to enter these uh, numbers. And then in Live 3D Viewer, you can further adjust those numbers. So it's kind of crazy where how many stops uh, you can change in these numbers. So I would say care less for now, uh, yeah, until you reach intermediate or advanced level. Don't have to worry about them, but keep in mind what fade in and fade out means, all right? So a size wise, um, it doesn't matter if you're using Live 3D Viewer for now, because I, I done. You can change the size within the project and all that. You can even like right now this project, her feet is actually outside of border, but I still export it without a problem. All right, so I'm not sure how. Actually, I'm not too sure about how sizes and uh, zoom in and zoom out works at this point. Uh, perhaps because Live 3D Viewer don't really apply those uh, effects. Even though I try to save as when I save it out when I export the motions, it asks me, do I want to export along the uh, sizes and zoom in, zoom out? And somehow 
uh, I tried to do that, but they don't they don't get affected at all in not the viewer. So I'll look into things and I'll let you know in future lessons. But anyhow, uh, if you if you're okay, once you got a name out, you you press OK, and then you got yourself the first scene. All right, and you see it's empty. Now what you got to do now is open your previous project, the one you export you saved in um, Live 2D Modeler, and then you drag and drop the C dot cmox file into live 2d animator now you see your character right here and you can test quickly if the parameters are active and running fine all right if you if you got if the parameters are having trouble you want to go back to your uh modeler to fix things first before moving into this part all right so once you move things around first thing you'll notice is that you see the first blue dot created right here because as you once you have some inputs in a perimeter it assumes that oh you want to have this action here so it's going to auto generate a blue dot and save the action at this frame all right so one second has 30 frame because when we open the project it asked us how many fps does it want and this is what it affects so uh, you see here the bar, this is between zero second and one second, and there should be 30 frames right here, and every second has 30 frames, all right? And this is a timeline. The green bar is uh, the, the part that you want to save as. When you export it, or when you export a specific motion, it will take whatever is within the green bar. Now the green bar can be very short. I can shrink it all the way even shorter than the pink part I can even like so some of the frames are outside of the green uh, frame and that that's okay too because whatever uh, you put here you can you can put extra stuff here it wouldn't it would ignore it completely when you save it out and so that is what what actually it does um, it doesn't matter maybe let's say now we can use uh, 1 point one five or one yeah 1.15 seconds right here for our first experiment and we're doing blush and here we go now if you hold alternate and your mouse wheel you can zoom in uh, do you need, yeah you need alternate and mouse wheel you will zoom in and zoom out in the in the frames so that you can expand them and see closely uh, each frame and you can you know you don't see like the wrong one uh, so now Let's see what we can do. We can first expand the box to know exactly what have we touched and what it's saved. Because just because you have a blue key right here doesn't mean every single perimeter and every single material have recorded a new data. If you didn't touch, if you touch the eyes, you didn't touch the hair, then it would only record that at this point the eyes have changed. The hair has no difference so it would keep the state of the last second or the last frame it would continue uh, moving on from along the last uh, input that it, it received maybe it could be idle motion it could be some other actions but it would just continue on it would not be overwritten all right so let's expand the perimeters and you can see every single perimeter, some of them has a pink dot, some of them don't. The ones that have a pink dot means that it, it has recorded a new data. And the ones that don't, that's, these are remain empty. So we got angle X and Y, uh, because just now we touched this perimeter, and now it says, okay, well you got a data here, angle X and Y. At frame one, it is recorded as the current one, so this red dot right here, all right? It, Whenever you play this motion, the first thing it will know is to reset the X and Y into the center. If you do this instead, and whenever you play this emotion, it would tilt our face to the left side because these dots recorded that at this second, the initiate second, it would turn its face this way. You get what I mean? So a quicker way to insert or, or make sure that everything has been reset when you start this expression because sometimes you could be moving from one expression or one motion to another one very quickly 
and you could say like last expression it might be mad so it has this uh, vein popped up on her forehead but then the next second you want her to do a sad face however when you do the sad face you didn't reset everything now you see her sad her tears dropping for some reason her purple vein between her eyes would still be there now that wouldn't make it that's totally you know off that's not it's not right at all it doesn't make sense the expression is not what you want so for one method as basic you can do this you can right click the first frame and then hit insert keyframe and what it does it would take all the frames as the default uh, value except the ones you touch so this one all right so what you should be done it should in immediately take whatever the last second is and continue into this frame all right so if I click here and I do that again it would copy whatever is at this moment previously and do those frames and record the frames there all right if it's um, okay let's get more let's get more uh, into the, the details all right so let's say the first frame we turn her head to the left side and if this frame you turn her head to the right side all right so these frames in between these 20 ish 30 frames in between uh, she would turn her head uh, corresponding to a certain degree corresponding to each frame a fraction of it all right you see like this if I click if I click play you'll see her turn her head like that and if I click like over here if I click insert frame again what's gonna happen what's this this keyframe is generated but it takes not this one not this one but the original moments that it had and save everything now you can delete this one or change this one it would still move from this frame this moment to this moment instead of this moment to that new moment so like uh, if I do I don't I don't want her to turn her head to the right I want to turn her head to the upwards all right and if you don't have this keyframe she would move from this to this directly so a diagonal movement of the head but since you have this previous recorded keyframe right here which turn her head to the right side first and she would make a turn she would first go here and make a turn and go up now let's have a look you see horizontal and upwards right up right up and that's and that's that's uh, the how you use the keyframe so we record everything you make sure that moment is captured if you don't have this one let's try to delete this one let's delete the whole keyframe all right so what happened now just from that to up left to up all right that's all she does so that's how you do keyframe now um, the question would be do you always want to have keyframe at the beginning or do you want to have at the end so that it would reset itself before moving on to the next motion like reset reset itself to default and make sure all those extra uh, material would disappear those purple veins those sweat drops those uh, uh, eye tears would you want them to all disappear before moving on to the next thing if that's the case why not have a general rule is to have insert a keyframe always at the end of each motion and make sure it is by the default values or whatever state that you want to be interchanged uh, maybe it's an eye close or a heads down or whatever um, that might be a case yes that theoretically that might work the problem is that sometimes you do not want to always go through that natural state that universally standard natural state before moving on sometimes you want if you look if you play uh, visual novel games or some uh, Japanese RPG games you realize whenever they change from one emotion to another they do not always change back to normal before uh, moving on to the next one they just get from point A to point B to point C they don't have point A point B point A point C all right because if you look if you look at them long enough you find it kind of annoying so um, what are you gonna do what's the option you do not want to have uh, confused expressions all mixed up together but you do not want to have a universal uh, stoic face 
static face before moving on. Now, here's something you can do is that whenever you make the expressions and you save them into a motion, to throw into Live 2D or a, a, a viewer, or you can throw into uh, After Effect or Unity, um, there's an option right here. If you express, if you export the, I'll put the motion data, uh, you can have something right here, parameters and switch part view. Now, these are five options. They all kind of sound the same thing. Uh, some of them sounds like exactly the same, but uh, what I recommend and also what the official website recommends is that although the default value would be parameters with transition and parameters with, with parts with transition, this is what you, you will be probably seeing right now if you have if, the, if this is the first time you open uh, Live 2D Animator. This is the default value, but what you want is the key keyed parameters, keyed parameters. That way, you will have a lot less chance to have mixed expressions. And you won't have the problem with always going back to a natural state, idle state, before uh, moving on to the next point. So it may not make sense to you now, but just stick with it for now. Uh, do some experiments with it and when you're confident with the overall uh, usage of control of Live 3 Animator, maybe you can try other uh, inputs, all right? So let me see. Okay, now we got everything out of the way, all the technical stuff. Now how do we do the expressions, all right? So let's say, uh, how do you want to start? If, you, if, we do, if we're doing expressions, we don't need any changes uh, in between in the whole motion, all right? So we're just doing one face. So let's try blush, all right? So let's have her looking slightly downwards to the side. And then the eyes, uh, maybe like this, uh, too much, like this. And and go Z, slightly tilt, eyeball, look at you, look at you. And eyebrow, I would say probably slightly towards the center and the angle that's fine let's deform like this I can keep her yeah I can should keep the mouth like this and then I'll have her body is fine don't worry about breathing because you have in, in live TV viewer there's a natural uh, breathing mechanic that you can just uh, use the default one and it would generate the breathing animation all right and so don't worry about blinking and breathing for now or actually out there's a way to generate blinking uh, I think it's by blink yes right here so you can cl you can click blink and what it does it would spread out a blinking motion throughout your frame bar evenly in a pattern. So uh, you can do that later. So don't worry about now because we're doing like a two seconds, like a 1.5 seconds uh, expressions. You don't need to worry about blinking. She, probably she won't blink at all in, in the second. Uh, so let's do the hair. I don't have to worry about hair because there's going to be a physics engine for the hair. So don't worry about hair motions for now, unless you want to have your own directions, uh, very specific directions. All right. Uh, don't worry about hair. And then I need the blush, the blush. Let's say let's have a basic one. All right. So the, the level, the level one blush, let's put it out. Let's put it that way. So let's have a check. Since we did, oops. Oh, we don't need to hold down alternate. We can just mouse wheel at this bar and I'll zoom in and out. Uh, we can see most of the dots are in, all the dots are in because we do we did an insert keyframe. So make sure she this would make sure that she would certainly go into this exact appearance when you do the expressions. If not, if there's certain dots that doesn't have a key, then she might just then that part would uh, give a continuation of whatever was la the last moment was. All right, so you got this key frame, and you can insert one right here. 
and this would take uh, record the moment which lasted from all the way here so it would be if you press play you wouldn't see any animation happening because you're doing one expression and all she does is turn to this state but you'll see the animation when you get into live 3d viewer or whatever software you're going to use next all right so let's try to export this once you're done with this uh, one expression or you can do a couple of them and you go to here and I'll click output motion data um, default is gonna be at selected output all scenes you just need output uh, selected scenes for now make sure there's a red box uh, around your character because that means that is it is the selected scene all right so 30 frame rates output area uh, work area check output position check 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 keyframe key parameters and key parts remember this MTN text uh, format standard and press OK and it's going to ask you to uh, export in, at a uh, location just go uh, yeah here all right so let's say blush one MTM stands for motion and press save and then it will automatically pop up the uh, folder that you were saving in all right, so you, you see this, you blush MTM, blush one MTM uh, is a very small file, very tiny because it doesn't embed the whole file in. It only saves a data of how to run, how to generate the specific expressions that you recorded. All right, so let's go into Live 3D Viewer and have a quick. All right, so we are at Live 3D Viewer and uh, I drag and drop my dot model dot moc file into the original uh, area gray area and then opens up my character first thing you want to do is click on auto eye blink and the idle motion and breathe and then go to sample project sample and add uh, I have my own hair physics but I can use the default right now just just hit motion all and you can see there's already some default motions for you. Now they don't really, some of them make sense, some of them don't. The reason is because the default pre-made uh, motions, they have certain data of what the parameters should respond as, re respond if you click on them. However, since individually we have different ways to control our parameters, so not of all of them are compatible. So then most of the default stuff don't work. But however, what you see is that it generates a new folder here. It's called motions and you got a bunch of stuff, including the most importantly, a sample idle because idle, idle motion is sort of cool. It's sort of what makes uh, it much more lively from, a, from, a, from the original, from the sheer initial impression, all right? And I think there's uh, hair physics. You can add physics. physics.json it doesn't seem to work on my hair I probably have to put the set them up uh, let's not do with uh, physics for now so you can click around you can see it moving looking at your thing and then he, and then go back to uh, the folder that you just saved your motion and just drag and drop just uh, blush one the MTM drag and drop and it will merge into the original motion folder you got there and you click on blush one.mtm now try double clicking it you see that you see your character right your, your the face would change into the motions for a 1.5 seconds now look at here you see those blush dots remaining there. Now that's a problem because my e exit uh, keyframe did not tell the character to remove those blushes. While the, the other factor is that the idle motion, the, I, the idle state uh, that it goes back into, also since it does not have a blush parameter at all, obviously it would not tell the character to take away the blush or return the value to zero. And that is why 
it stayed behind is because both motions, the motion A and motion B, none of them tell the character to remove the blushes. That's why the blush would remain. Now, if you have other expressions, and they also don't have anything to do with the blush, the blush will stay there forever until you got something, one of the motions that would tell the blush to go away or go to the next level or whatnot, right? So until you got changes, so so that's how that's a concept behind the perimeters that you have to control. And uh, at first you would have a lot of these problem. Yes, you would see it running fine. You just don't have. You just feel like something is gonna be off. Something is gonna be mixed up, and you thought it's a glitch, it's a bug. It's not. It's really how just how you have to get used to it controlling the keyframes. And as you can see here, as I explained earlier, fade in and fade out. Like these are values that would affect how fast it goes in and goes out of the action. If it's if you a higher value is the smoother it will look. However, smoother means that sometimes it may not completely finish the motion before it starts ex exiting like, or leaving it. So your mouth may not be completely wide open as you input the value as before it starts closing out, uh, close, closing down because the fade in and fade out are too high. It's too smooth. It takes too long to get in and get out of, the, or too, 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 too long, too late to get into motion and too soon to leave the motion. That's why the motion did not get into the final value before leaving it. And that is why you eventually have to look into the fade in and fade out. Now let's try to turn it to like one or zero, all right? What happens now is that, you see that it's suddenly like boom and goes into that blush motion. Now why does it soft, why does it soft out? It's not because I have a soft, it's not because blush one has a soft out, it's because sample idle has a soft in. Sample idle has a fade in of 1000 ms, and that's why you can see it uh, quickly, uh, slowly returning to idle, but that entering motion is just so quick, it suddenly go like, boom, and that's it. If we turn up the fade in to 200, You see that almost like a, a, it's very minor, very subtle, but it, it does soften out the entering state. And if you go extreme, say 2000, ooh, and it goes like a slow motion blush, and then exits. Now if both values are too high, you will see that she does not finish the whole motion before leaving it. Uh, does it work? Maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't, but as you can imagine, if you go higher than that, then obviously it would not even, uh, the blush would not even completely appear before leaving the blush, so it would remain as a half transparent blush and all that. And if you got that problem, then you know where to fix it, all right? So uh, what I would suggest is that leave all the fade in and fade out within animator's control. So you control how quick it, sh uh, enters and exit. Don't rely on this value. Always keep this to one or zero. And if that's too harsh of a motion, then add the softness within your animation. So you wanna do it right here. You wanna move this up. And what you want here is a insert keyframe and you want a default face. or some kind of uh, default face. The reason for being so is this helps you, this gives you chance, a chance or more chances to practice your animation skill. Now you got like maybe 10 frames here and she would go like this and this, or she would just enter it softly and exit would be relying on the idle motions own entering uh, MS, fade in MS, all right? So what you're doing here is that leave it not to the computer, but yourself to control how soft it enters. If you feel like, oh, that's too sharp, then you're gonna move this further away. Now you see the, ent the entrance is slower now. And you say it's too slow, you move it back up. And it goes like, bam, right there. All right, so start doing with this. Eventually you'll figure out some problems with this method. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that 
if you have this, uh, uh, if you get this going on first, you would uh, understand what you're trying to do. You understand uh, whatever button you press, what it would do, what do you mean by fast, what do you mean by slow, how many, f how slow is 15 frames, how slow is, how fast is two frames, and all those things. Obviously, that depends on FPS, but you know what, you know what I'm trying to say, right? So that's probably you have to know. And before, until the next lesson, uh, you can go ahead and do a bunch of these expressions. Just click new, uh, call it happy, happy one, happy one, happy two, whatever. And then all, all, again, one, you, every time you create a new scene, everything will disappear. If you want to keep it, you can just click the last one and just duplicate it, right? Click it. Maybe I'm gonna make it into blush two because those are pretty the same, except a specific parameter is different. Then you do uh, blush two and just duplicate it, and you have everything all set already or or in there already. And then you can go to the blush parameter, turn it up. Also remember, don't forget the exit one. Turn it up, and there you go. You have your blush two ready. Of course, you there's more tweak you want to make. Go ahead and do it. But uh, that's some you can consider this method to save some workload. Uh, otherwise, you can open a new scene. Everything's gonna be blank. You got to go back to your photos and drag and drop the model back in, and insert those keyframes. All right. So hopefully that helps you to get started up with Animator. If you got questions. Uh, leave me in the comment. If you got trouble with the Java, definitely tell me. Looking for a solution is pretty hard, at least from my experience. All right, so let me know, and I'll see you guys next lesson.